Hello and welcome. You're watching Overdrive. I'm Sohini Dutt. Nothing is ever ordinary at Overdrive. We'll go to great lengths to make a point, to offer advice and to even celebrate. So when Overdrive's 16th anniversary coincides with India's 68th anniversary of independence, a celebration of mammoth proportions was in order. Now hoisting the national flag and singing the national anthem sounds like a household chore. So we decided to take five very capable SUVs from Audi to the mighty Himalayas to do it there. Last year, we celebrated at the daunting Marcy Mikla Pass. This year, well, why don't you just see for yourself? Here's wishing us a happy anniversary and you a belated Independence Day. August, India's Independence Day, a day when billions of Indians stand up and pay respect to the nation that provides them the freedom they live in. On this day, with a great sense of national pride, we stand up and raise the national flag, sing the national anthem. But here at Overdrive, we don't do things the normal way. We've driven all the way to the roof of the world and we're right here now on the banks of the Pangyong Lake. Right behind me is a team of enthusiastic people from all across India, from different walks of life, who've come to live life in Overdrive. And of course, as you can see, they're busy raising the flagpole where we're going to raise and hoist the national flag. But in the meantime, let me take you on a journey that brought us to this point. We picked up the cars as usual from Audi Chandigarh, stickered them and then one important process was taken care of before we departed this city. We changed the engine oil using Mobile One in each of these Q cars. Because up there, in the Himalayas, you need reliable smooth engines and in those adverse conditions, you need an engine oil that can complement your motor. Stickering, instructing and packing done, we headed out after some wonderful hospitality at the Park Plaza Zirakpur, not knowing if these levels of comfort to all our senses would be available again over the next 10 days. Chandigarh, Manali, Jispa, Sarchu, Pang, Tanglangla and finally Leh. It's a route we've travelled on often enough to know it blindfolded. With an enthusiastic bunch of temp staff living out their dream of being Overdrive team members, the drive was an eye-opener. Smooth, fun and yet well-measured and safely paced out. The ups and downs of Ladakh were soon well wrapped up under these enthusiasts' bed. I come from a hilly area, but uh, the kind of different terrain, the roads, uh, the challenges that is on this trip, it's completely blew my mind away. Himachal is completely low height. Uh, this is a quite a different one. Uh, the roads, at, at times there are no roads, at times there are uh, completely mud and uh, sand that you can see in the, ahead of you. At times there, it's hard to barely find the trails of the road that you've been trying to uh, head on. Uh, and suddenly, one turn ahead, you will find a beautiful, majestic scenery which will completely blow your mind away. We drove through some uh, spectacular scenery. I think uh, every single place that we drove, every 10-15 kilometers, the landscape, the terrain would change dramatically. I mean, the vast plains of the Moray uh, was complete contrast to the steep inclines that we had to encounter when we crossed Kardula, and the views were fantastic, and the mountains. The greenery that we saw on the hills as we crossed uh, Manali completely faded away once we reached the Leh Ladakh region with brown kind of desert kind of uh, situations in there. And that kind of had a very lasting impact. And you could try, as, try and do your best to click some of these pictures, but the best way to capture the beauty of these is to just take a hard look at them, close your eyes, soak in the effect, and just move on. Because you never know, the next stunning scenery is just around the corner. Leh to Khardungla is a challenging drive for any who intends to come up here. It's one of the highest roads in the world and the oxygen is thin, barely enough for everyone gathered up here. It's cold and yet somehow everyone finds the energy to record this moment, share a laugh and then proceed ahead to wherever they have to go with a splitting headache. The weather conditions have been very harsh. At one moment it's like 30 degrees and in another 15 minutes it's like 10 degrees. So it's very difficult to adapt to the weather conditions here. And about the day we landed in Leh, we reached Leh, I was like, I want to go back home because I was quite breathless and my pulse rate had gone up really high. 
and but it was the support of the overdrive team and we had a doctor among the participants which helped me you know it really supported me mentally and i pushed myself and i'm happy i did it and i didn't go back home i am an emergency physician by profession and i know how altitude sickness can be hard on the tourist in these high altitudes but the ODI team had all the necessary precautions in place. Okay, Roddy McKenzie, an Australian paramedic, did a demonstration on how to prevent altitude sickness. He even showed us how to use a pressurized air chamber, which we carried along with us for the entire trip. Fortunately, we never had a chance to use it, but it was good to know that we had some support if we needed to use that, if anyone felt really sick. In this region, due to the lack of facilities, getting food like in a big town is unheard of. There are no restaurants dishing out gourmet meals, just parachute tents serving piping hot maggi, momos and thuppa. For a little variety, there's always pali ji dipped in hot tea. The food that we ate, you know, it was basic stuff like maggi noodles and, and uh, you know, thuppa and all these kind of things, momos and stuff that we don't actually eat back home in Mumbai. But uh, even the cold, the hot maggi tastes like heaven. Having your meals on this road trip is quite a challenge in itself because you don't know when you're going to get your next meal. And in my experience, we always got a meal at the highest altitude and what we got to eat was only maggi. So we had to compromise on food and that too at a very high altitude. So it was very, very difficult. Driving the Q7 up Kardungla Pass was probably the greatest challenge of my life and I'm glad I did it because uh, it gave me the kind of confidence and the emotion that we went through was just fantastic because the roads were really not up to the mark to be honest at some places and the machines responded fantastically which gave me the confidence that I'd be able to do it and once we reached the top it was pretty much a reflection of how things are. Mother Nature doesn't make it easy for anyone but at the same time it's kind of how you live life. Life throws challenges at you and you overcome that. I believe that's what pretty much what Overdrive does anyways. Uh, last year when I was there at Khadungla, I couldn't breathe. You know, I was like all drowsy and you know, I was like 18,000 feet, okay, let me just go and take a selfie. Like, but this year I was, you know, I was on a different role because there are a lot of friends uh, uh, with me who motivated me and you know, it was just a good experience and when there are uh, like-minded people around you, you get a good positive vibe to do something like that, you know. So I, I just climbed up and I took a selfie and I felt like I was on top of the world. Ladakh is a sensory bombardment, an overwhelming experience. There's just so much to see, so much you want to photograph and so many breathtaking visuals that it's difficult to capture it all on film. Our first glimpse of the majestic Nubra Valley had many staring at it in awe. The meeting of the Shok River running along the Indo-Pak border and the Nubra River is magical. We just couldn't get over it and yet had to make our way quite reluctantly to our campsite where the city slickers would rough it. I was uh, super excited today because the plan was to drive all the way from uh, Leh to the Nubra Valley. I've heard so much about it and I was just uh, waiting to experience it by myself. And uh, the drive was awesome. We had uh, lovely twisties going all the way up to Kardungla and then after that the descent all the way down to the Nubra Valley. The views were amazing. We were, the, we were with an amazing bunch of people. And uh, once we started descending down and then before we knew it, Suddenly there was, uh, the Nubra Valley was upon us. The two rivers meeting with the mountains in the backdrop totally blew us away. We all stopped, we couldn't uh, stop clicking enough photographs. It was just like mind blowing. And then after that, uh, we were guided to this uh, campsite. And me being a city guy, knowing that uh, I'm gonna be spending the night in tents and uh, as you can see, enjoying a beautiful uh, bonfire after a lovely meal. And uh, it's just like blown me away. 
Like every two minutes I keep like, you know, pinching myself. I can't believe that I'm actually over here under these stars. Sun's out early, very early, and it's the perfect time to sneak into one of the tents and see for ourselves how our participants are faring. I hope they spent the night peacefully. And by the look of it, a little too peacefully. Morning boys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's the night we like? <laughs> Living in the tents was a uh, totally different experience. Uh, I have actually lived in tents before, but uh, this, these tents were actually uh, in places that there aren't any people, you know, so they were not at all luxurious. They were very basic and uh, we barely had hot water, uh, but we are very fortunate that uh, these tents gave us good beds and gave us hot water. And uh, it was uh, something different that we did, uh, something uh, out of the box and uh, something that added spice to our uh, to our uh, entire trip the drive today is far more treacherous than anything so far simply because we are heading towards varila this mountain pass has no road so to speak of at least on the western side after a sensational drive on the Nubra river bed, the roughly 25 km route up to the pass is a car buster. The Audis were taking a beating and yet holding forth strongly, giving the drivers enough confidence to soldier on. The stretch from uh, Nubra valley to, to Changla I think was one of the most treacherous one. After crossing the Kardungla pass, I thought I had crossed the most uh, difficult part of the road but I think this stretch was the most testing for, for the machines as well as for the people who drove them. Pretty surprising is that uh, a luxury uh, SUV auto, uh, automobile uh, could handle uh, rough Indian uh, terrains that, uh, you get, uh, uh, that you get in uh, places like Leh. I'm a pilot as a, a profession and uh, I kind of relate to how important uh, power, torque, the kind of uh, traction you need uh, when uh, you are in an extreme environment. When we fly, uh, we do have severe weather. Power is everything to us, especially when we uh, take off from runways which are at high altitudes. But, uh, you know, we take these things for granted. When I came on this uh, adventure with Audi and Overdrive, I mean, we were thrown with so many obstacles. The weather changes so rapidly in a you know, matter of seconds. One minute you're at 7,000 feet. Within 40 kilometers, you've climbed up to like 12, 13,000 feet. You see the power lag. You realize how important it is for a vehicle to perform at a level and to give you the kind of torque you require, the kind of uh, power you require, especially when you're going down narrow guards, climbing up terrain. And uh, you just need to be reassured that, uh, you know, once you put the foot down, that power is going to come even at uh, 17,800 feet, driving a fully loaded car, heavy vehicle, luxury SUV. It just performed, I mean, it was so con confidence uh, reassuring to uh, say the least. I mean, we just trust these vehicles blindly. I mean, it was amazing. from Chandigarh, past Banali, into the town of Leh in Ladakh. You've seen us climb up the formidable Khardungla Pass. You've seen us descend and camp in the spectacular Nubra Valley. After that, we climbed back up again, then Varila. Well, it's very treacherous, but we made through it safely enough. We're now finally descending down to Pangyong Lake, where we, Live Life in Overdrive, will celebrate India's Independence Day, where we will take great pride in raising the national flag and singing out the national anthem. But why Pangyong? Well, Principally because I still do believe that Pangyong is the most scenic, the most sensational looking lake or the most wonderful scenery in all of India. And second, well, it's got a lot of historic importance. 
The lake continues to be a matter of great debate between two nations, India and China. Several battles and countless lives have been lost over between these two countries, in these two countries, over who could claim ownership in the area that this lake resides in. That's what has brought us down here to Pangyong Lake to hoist the national flag. We've been coming here for over a decade and it's the first time we ever thought of hoisting the flag on its banks. But then we never ever had an occasion and the sense of purpose to do this. It's a spectacular setting to hoist the tricolour framed by the azure blue waters and the lofty peaks in the distance. Celebrating our Independence Day could never have been this special. Today is the 15th of August and uh, Independence Day. Uh, all of us uh, hoisted, just hoisted the flag. It was a very nice experience because we got uh, started uh, started right from the beginning, right from scratch. Uh, worked on uh, getting the flag going and uh, the pole and digging a hole and stuff. And uh, we did everything. We participants did everything ourselves, and it was uh, a different experience. And uh, I really miss my kids. I was uh, my kids, Tara, Tara, and Thea were here with with me, uh, and a part of this entire uh, hoisting the national flag uh, event. I never, in my wildest dreams, imagined that I would be able to come to uh, such a place and uh, hoist our national flag. Uh, one of the things that this, uh, that this trip really highlighted was the was the beautiful work that uh, our defence forces are doing uh, in the border. Uh, I've seen a number of them on the way and uh, it's a matter of pride that uh, they protect our borders in such extreme conditions and uh, it's a, and I think we come to respect them a lot after this trip. I hardly remember when I last hoisted a flag. Maybe it was sometime in school and after school it was on the Independence Day at the Penang Lake and it was quite an experience. Felt real patriotic. As you can see behind me, it's like heaven on earth and it just worked the patriotic spirit in me when all of us together, a big bunch of friends got together and as you can see behind me, I hoisted the Indian flag, sang our national anthem and then ended it off with a Jai Hind. It really made me feel so proud to be Indian. The thought of hoisting the national flag on Independence Day was always going to be a very proud moment for us. But the very thought that 10 or 15 of us, complete strangers, would come together, travel hundreds of kilometers to this great place and hoist the flag. Just pretty much like about 60, 65 years ago, a lot of people came together, strangers united in one cause, that we can have the right to hoist this flag. That's what challenged me most, and that's what inspired me to do this. I think it's been one of the proudest moments of my life. Nothing in the world can ever, ever be this sight. Jai Hind. Told you, didn't I? Nothing's ever ordinary with Overdrive. Remember, you can be a part of the Live Life in Overdrive adventure. All you need to do is get onto our website and register yourself. It's time now to wrap up this episode of Overdrive, but we do hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed filming it for you. You can catch this episode on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to tune in next week as we bring you the reviews of two very important cars. The much anticipated Sierra's from Maruti and the Dark Horse from Skoda, the all-new Yeti.